Здравствуйте, welcome back to Russian through poems and paintings. Today's day 135, and uh, we're going to learn some vocab today for talking about trust and fear and belief and things like this, and also review comparative forms that are used adverbially. So uh, yesterday on day 134, we reviewed just how to take adjectives and make their comparatives, and we mentioned that those forms we made could also be used uh, adverbially, right? They could look like a form, for example, like luch. Uh, from the adjective хороший, right, could mean, could be used as an adjective, like this is better, or as an adverb, like I do something better than someone else, right? So лучше, uh, it, it could be either adjective, adjectival, or adverbial. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, let's just review some uh, comparatives that are frequently used adverbially. And here we'll use the uh, the adverb, right, the corresponding adverb as our starting form, our starting point. Right, so for example, много, which again is itself an adverb, or at least it can be, right? I do something a lot. Uh, the comparative would be больше, мало, меньше, хорошо, лучше, плохо, хуже, быстро, быстрее. Right, so again, we saw that example yesterday. Быстрее could be used uh, adjectivally. For example, uh, she is faster. Or it could be used adverbially, uh, she runs more quickly, right? She runs faster than her brother or something like this. Medlina, medlinie, gromka, gromcha, tiche, tiche, pozna, pozha, rana, rancha, daliko, dalsha, bliska, blija, chasta, chasha, redka, reja, dolga, Dolce, and uh, another adverb here, davno. We're going to discuss the difference between dolga and davno in just a moment. So, uh, looking at just a couple of examples, kitara gromka abarabani shogromcha. Okay, so there we have first an adjective, obviously, and then we're using a comparative adjective, right? Uh, or we could say we're using gromcha adjectivally. Right, the guitar is loud, but the drums are even louder. Right, adjectival uh, use of that. Uh, compare that with guitarist играет громко, барабанщик еще громче. Right, so now adverbs. The guitarist is playing loudly. Right, adverb громко, while the drummer is in, is playing even more loudly. Еще громче. Right, so there громче being used uh, adverbially. Okay, so let's just fill in some blanks here to practice these forms. Я много читаю, а моя подруга читает еще больше. Right? I read a lot, but my girlfriend or my female friend reads even more. Папа встает рано, а мама встает еще раньше. Right? Dad gets up early, but mom gets up even earlier. Мы долго работали, а он работал еще дольше. Right? We worked for a long time, he worked for an even longer time. Um, by the way, the yeshua here isn't required, but it's quite common, right? Uh, uh, again, it means here in this case, literally still longer, right? He worked still longer, or maybe it sounds a bit better to translate using even in English, right? He worked even uh, for even longer. Он живет близко отсюда, а она еще ближе, right? He lives close by, close from here, literally, or closely from here, I guess, if we're being super literal. Ana yesho blije, right? She li lives even more close by. Mui živjom daleko od centra, a ni yesho dalše, right? We live a long way from downtown, they li live even further. Studenti redka dihaju, a profesora yesho reže, right? Students relax rarely, professors even more rarely. Mui prišli na urok, na urok pozna, a ni yesho pozje. We came to class late, they came even later. Ya yem ochin mala miasa, a on yisho mienshe. I eat very little meat, he eats even less. Djevic, ana gavari paruski hrasho, a on yisho lutshe. She speaks Russian well, he speaks it even better. Djesic, ti biega yisho chin bistra, a ni yisho bistreye. You run very quickly, but they run even more quickly. Отсюда плохо видно, а оттуда еще хуже. Right, from here, it is, uh, one can see poorly, right, uh, 
literally something more like it is poorly visible. To the Yeshua Chuzha, right? But from there, it's even worse. Uh, we speak quietly, they speak even more quietly. Okay, so skipping over the conversational stuff in the book, uh, here's something you see very often that um, isn't always, I think, talked about in books as often as maybe it should be. Uh, Russians all the time will insert a pua, or they'll add a pua to the beginning of a comparative like the ones we've just been using. And that could be read literally as a bit, right? And we've seen that type of thing with verbs, for example, like uh, meaning to walk around for a bit, to read for a bit. So uh, this isn't the only place where poor can be read uh, as meaning uh, a bit. Um, but uh, I think you could say generally that Russians use these, these poor forms, I wouldn't say by default, but just very often, right? In, in the way that doesn't always literally mean just a bit. One, one reason they do this is it sounds a bit more polite often. So for example, uh, you want to tell someone to shut up, right? To speak more quietly. Uh, you could say Mojna Tisha, but that sounds a little bit odd, maybe a little bit abrupt. Uh, so what you usually hear is Mojna uh, Patisha, right? Говорите Патиша, пожалуйста, right? Meaning literally a bit more quietly, uh, or again, just uh, could you speak more quietly, please? Right? Could you quieten down uh, in a way that sounds a bit more polite, right? That takes the edge off a little bit. Okay, so at any rate, for different reasons in different contexts, these pull forms are extremely common. So let's practice a few of these. Uh, and just keep in mind that, that in terms of the grammar, you could, of course, always leave the pull. You could leave it off and you'd still have a perfectly good sentence. Мне надо работать. Говорите потише, right? Speak a bit more quietly. I've got to work. Number two, плохо слышно, right? I can't hear. Uh, it's, it's, it's poorly audible, literally. Говорите погромче, right? Speak a bit more loudly. Three, мы опаздываем на поезд. Давай побыстрее, right? We're late for the train. We're running late. Let's go a bit more quickly. Давай побыстрее. Четыре, я занят. I'm busy. Let's meet uh, a bit later, I guess. Давай встретимся попозже, попозже, a bit later. Пять, поезд, поезд отправляется в семь утра. Надо встать пораньше. Right, we need to get up a bit earlier. The train is leaving at 7 o'clock. Шесть, я столько не съем. I literally will not eat so much. Right, I can't eat that much. Положить, пожалуйста, поменьше. Right, literally lay, please, a bit less. Meaning give me a bit less food. Right, don't serve me so much food. Съем, мы никогда не видимся. We never see each other. Надо чаще встречаться. There's a very common little phrase you hear, right? We should get together more often. Надо чаще встречаться. Right, чаще, more often, more frequently from the adverb uh, часто. Восемь, я плохо понимаю по-русски. Говорите помедленнее. Right, speak a bit more slowly. So there's a very useful one if you're trying to speak Russian and uh, the people are speaking very too quickly to understand. Okay, let's review uh, a couple of words here that we've had um, for some time now, but they're very easy to confuse. Uh, dolga and davno. So dolga simply means for a long time, right? You were doing something for a long time. We have this sense of duration, right? Something ongoing for a long period of time. Whereas davno means something more like for a long time now, right? Davno looks to the past, essentially, right? So something happened davno a long time ago. Uh, and if the action is still ongoing, right, so we use davno with the present tense verb, uh, we could say something like something's been going going on for a long time now, right, and it's still ongoing. For example, я так долго работал вчера всю ночь. I worked for such a long time yesterday, right? Долго for a long time. I worked for a long time. Я uh, versus я давно здесь работаю, or я давно уже здесь работаю. And note the present tense verb, right? I work here and I've been working for a long time now, for a long time already. Okay, we can negate davno and uh, we get a stress shift, but we get this form nedavna, meaning not a long time ago, recently. Very common 
Он недавно поехал в США, right? He recently departed for the U.S. Он давно там не был. He hadn't been there in a long time. Он был там уже, но это было давно, right? It was a long time ago when, that he was there. Uh, you know, one other form that I could have put here, maybe I should add a footnote, is uh, надолго. That means for a long time. And the same way we, we use на with periods of time when we're talking about future plans, like uh, я еду в Москву на одну неделю, right? For uh, one, one week. Or I could say надолго, right? I'm going to Moscow for a long period of time. Um, so, okay, so let's translate a few simple sentences here and choose between давно and долго carefully. We've been studying Russian for a long time now. Okay, note present tense verb is учаем, right? This is still ongoing. Мы давно изучаем русский язык. We studied verbs of motion for a very long time. Okay, here we have a past tense verb is учали, and so this action is restricted to the past, and it was it, it was ongoing for a long time in the past, right? That's going to be долго. Мы очень долго изучали глаголы движения. Три, recently, okay, it'll be недавно. Недавно мы изучали представочные глаголы движения. Recently, not long ago, недавно, we studied представочные глаголы движения, that is, verbs of motion with a приставка, a prefix. Okay, we learned the Russian alphabet a, lo al alphabet a long time ago. Мы давно выучили русский алфавит. Right, we studied that a long time ago. Okay, here's some uh, vocab for discussion. Uh, uh, vocab related to trust, fear, and deceit, and so forth. So I'll just read through this quickly and uh, take a look at, by the way, some of these verbs we've seen already, but let's pay attention for maybe what case they require, if they require a... a, a an object in a, in a case other than the accusative, and uh, continue to look for how we're marking up these verbs, as, especially as we get ready to uh, do more reading in the near future. We want to be sure to know how to make sense of these vocab entries uh, as we gloss uh, the, the vocabulary in the text. All right, so to believe in something is верить, поверить во что. Right, so you believe in something plus the accusative, this verb can also take the dative, a dative object, especially with people. Верить, поверить, кому, right? To believe someone, that's taking the dative. And again, the кому is the way we're marking that, right? Кому is the dative form of кто. Similarly, uh, доверять, доверить, кому, right? To trust someone also takes the dative. Боятся, as we know, takes the genitive, right? Боятся чего? Uh, to frighten, we've practiced this bit of vocab. That's pugat is pugat. That's to frighten someone. That would take accusative, which we assume by default. We can add the particle to get a passive version of that same verb. Pugat is pugat, meaning to be frightened, to get frightened. Padjelovit uh, padjelovit means to make in an underhanded fashion. See that pod, and I think we've mentioned how that pod, which literally means underneath, it can take on this kind of moral. A uh, layer of meaning, meaning you're doing something on the sly, under the table, surreptitiously, that kind of thing. And so here's a nice example of that. This means to forge, right? To to make to fake something. Christ to Christ, to steal. Those are the obstruents. So kradu, kradyosh, kradyot would be the conjugation pattern. To promise, abishait, babishait. Well, you promise some something to someone, right? So that takes the dative. Abmanovitz abmanuitz means to deceive. Lgait salgait means to lie. And just like in English, we lie to someone. We get a dative in Russian kamu. Lgait uh, is a rather weird verb. You see the pattern lgu lzhosh. It's an NSI verb. And so is vrait, which is uh, fairly close. Sometimes these are both used almost interchangeably, but vrait. Lgait tends to be more of just you you told a you told a lie, you told an untruth in a fairly straightforward fashion. Vrat uh tends to involve just kind of talking a bunch of nonsense, right? Telling tall tales, um, that kind of thing, as opposed to just lying to someone's face, right? Bredit means to rave, right? To to talk nonsense. Uh that's a fairly common uh verb in Russian. Uh I mean, you know, someone's talking like a crazy person or something, right? You say, well, on bredit, 
meaning he's raving as if in a delirium or something, right? Prashat, uh, prastit means to forgive. Izminyat, izminit means to change if we if it takes the accusative, like shtua, but if we follow it with a person, the dative, like kamu, it means to betray, including to cheat on someone in a romantic sense, right? Izminyat, izminit, kamu, to betray someone or cheat on them. Okay, a few nouns, some of which are related to the verbs that we just went through. Viera, davieria, strach, abyshania. There's a verbal noun, right? So hopefully at this point we're beginning to see how some of these words hang together, right? How um, nouns come from verbs and so forth. By the way, the verb vieritz is obviously derived from the noun viera, right, faith. Anyway, padielka, there's the noun corresponding to padiela. It's right, a padielka is something that's been faked or forged. Kraja is theft of something. Vor, a thief. Abman is deception. Loish, which is singular only, that's um, a falsehood or falsehood generally. Uh, lie, lies. Right, so in Russian, basically, there's only falsehood. There aren't lies in the plural. You just don't use that in the plural. Vranyo means, again, someone's telling tall tales, right? It's not so much that they're just lying directly, but they're talking a bunch of crazy, crazy talk, let's put it that way. Bread, nonsense, again, literally delirious ravings. Izmiana, betrayal. Okay, a few adjectives, vierni. Davierchivli, which of course we can negate and say niedavierchivli, padielny, right, forged or faked, nastayashi means real, and lojny means false, and obviously that's related to loj. Okay, let's just trans- use a few of these verbs quickly. My friend is afraid of black cats, and again, we want to make sure we're getting the right case. Moy drug koshek. Or Chornich Katoff, right? Chornich Koshik, he's afraid of black cats, genitive. Marx didn't believe in God. Uh, Marx nevierov boga, or nevierov boga, or he didn't believe in God. Three, they forge Italian purses. Aini padielavayut italianski sumki. Chitiri, he's an idealist, he wants to change the world. On uh, idealist, on hochit izminit mir. Okay, so there's the accusative, meaning just simply to change. Is minit mir. Piat, he cheated on his wife with her friend. Uh, oh my God. Okay, so this cheating on someone, right, that's going to now take the dative. On is minil genia. On is minil genia si yo padrugui. Okay, unbelievable. Six. He's been deceiving her for five years. Okay, now there's an aspectual thing, right? For five years this went on, right? That's a long duration. That's going to be imperfective. Uh, now, by the way, if this is still ongoing, right? He's been discovered, I guess. So maybe he's taken a break from the, 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 the cheating. But uh, we could say, right? And that would, again, imply that it's still ongoing. Uh, see him the whole time he was stealing her money. Again, same reason, right? This whole time, long duration, we need imperfective. Voice him, they lied to me and I'm not going to forgive them. Right, they lied to me. Uh, perfective, we need dative, so I will not forgive them. Right, I won't forgive them. By the way, uh, the the forgiving verb can also be combined with a dative if you have a clear direct object, right? Uh, so you could say something like "yanibuduim uh, etava prashat" or something, right? I I won't forgive them this, uh, but that that's I think a little more unusual. Uh, usually, you would just get a, a direct object. Uh, I don't trust politicians, okay? Trusting, believing, that's going to take uh, the dative with people. Okay, so again, in the book, you've got lots of discussion prompts, right? So you can use this vocab today to tell a bit about yourself and answer some questions. Um, 
But that's it in terms of today's grammar. So uh, until next time, just for